Hello everybody, please excuse the noise from over there. They're um they're cleaning up the garbage. That's uh that's what they're doing there. Picking up the, the garbage. But uh yeah, here's something I haven't got a chance to do yet, at least not on camera. Look at the uh the beautiful uh, sunset. I, actually I think this is past sunset. This might actually be twilight. I don't know, I'm not really a big fan. I'm well wouldn't say fan, but I'm not really I'm not really that knowledgeable on the times of the day. But yeah, I mean I just love this new uh, feature, if you can even call it a feature, that you can actually see the exact time of day reflected on the game. Not only in, in this catching screen, but mainly in the overworld, where you can actually see the color of the sky, the positioning of the sun, even the uh, um, sort of the landscape you're walking on, the ground you're walking on is painted in a different color because of the time of day. I love it! Makes the game feel much more realistic. And just in case you were wondering, yes, in really early in the mornings, say sunrise, it does the same thing. I know that because that's usually when I go to sleep, when the sun comes up. But yeah, I know that it works that way because, I mean, I kind of live it. Almost every day. Play. I, I play this game, for those of you who don't know, I play this game in bed before going to sleep. Um, I put something, some TV show on Netflix on my, uh, on my tablet while playing this game. And, and, you know, just a few more minutes of playing the game before, uh, before turning in. And it's fun. But yes, the, the, the same thing, the color of the sky, the positioning of the sun, the clouds even. Uh, the ground is being colored in a different color. And you can kind of see sun, in, in the catching screen, you can kind of see, um, um, light from the sky but you can still see the stars because it's still technically nighttime it's great maybe one of these days i'll consider recording an episode at four in the morning just um just to show it off because i don't think many people are going to be playing this game at that time so a lot of people probably won't get to experience the the way the game looks like around that particular hour. Anyways, the reason I'm recording this at this hour is, well, I'm in between shifts, more specifically in between night shifts at work. Uh, tonight will be my third night shift in a row, and then uh, I've got the whole day off tomorrow, so gay for me, but I, got, I just got back home really, really tired tonight, so, uh, well, this, this morning, I should say, and I just went right, right to bed. No too many shenanigans or tomfoolery involved. So, uh, this is more or less when I woke up. I just finished editing a Shmodan reaction that I did yesterday. I finally, I finally had the time to do Shmodan reactions again, but yeah, I woke up, let's say about an hour ago ish. And wasn't really much reason for me to go outside and do an episode except I figured why not show off this new uh, the look of uh, the um, the look of the sky and uh, the landscape and everything fun fact it also transitions into the battle screen and it's cliff of course go away cliff I don't need you I need Arlo he's the only one I'm still I still need to, to beat for uh, the Shadow Ho-Oh mission. Just cross the road here really quick. Speaking of missions, this is going to be a week full of missions. I've actually completed the uh, some of the other missions. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can just finish the Meloetta mission today, right now, as a matter of fact. I'm going to where I think there's going to be a Chingo Rocket leader focused up, and I'm hoping it's Arlo this time. 
Okay, so let's start off with the Dialga mission. At least I think it's Dialga. I mean, it's the Ultra Unlock Time mission. So let's see. I'm guessing it's going to be a dragon, probably. Or maybe not. It's an Aerodactyl. Still very dragon ish. It also has a um, Mega Evolution that I believe has yet to be introduced into the game yet. This game, that is. Wee! But I'm really not sure. Oh, maybe it's because it's another fossil Pokemon. And it's actually a, a rather special one at that because Kanto is the only. Kanto is the only poke the only game that so far that introduced three fossils. Now obviously Galar introduced four, but it's a little bit more of a complicated situation than that. But see, just like in every other Pokemon game, most every other Pokemon game that introduced fossils, um, you get a choice between two fossils. You, you either pick this one or the other one. You either get Omanyte or Kabuto. But there's also a special location, I believe, where you can find a third fossil that contains um, Aerodactyl in it. So yeah, that was special. It introduced three fossils. Like I said, so far the only game that introduced three fossils. Three fully evolved, I should say. Three fully evolved fossil Pokemon. Also, on top of that, for a very long time, Aerodactyl was the only fossil Pokemon that just um, didn't evolve. It was as it is. Now, obviously, it received a Mega Evolution, and I believe so far the only um, fossil Pokemon to receive a Mega Evolution. This cat is just looking at me with weird eyes. Uh, but, yeah, Aerodactyl is a very, very special fossil Pokemon. Not really one of my favorites, but... It's definitely special nonetheless. Um, there's Arlo, finally. And also, fun fact, uh, they were around the same time as, as uh, the original Pokemon games came out, which was originally called Pokemania. That was the time when everything was Pokemon. And then in the mid to late 90s, uh, a new species of uh, Pterosaur was discovered, which was named Aerodactylus, after the Pokemon Aerodactyl. So yeah, that's kind of a fun fact. Okay, Arlo should be a breeze. And uh, then we can get back to the mission stuff. And then I gotta go back to my main neighborhood and pick up a pizza. Because I've got myself another Smorton reaction video to... Uh, myself and I want to do the pizza because why not I, I enjoy these schmodown and pizza combinations I try not to eat on camera because personally I I hate it when when, when people on, eat on camera but um, if it's a schmodown pizza combination I don't know, for some reason it just really works for me and I like it. Okay. I'm going to shock you. It's a shame that Charge Beam really doesn't do much in this game. Because it's a really cool attack in the main series game. Like, hold on. It's an electric type move. Special attack, I, sh I, I should say. It's electric, it's electric type special move. Doesn't do a lot of damage. However, it increases the special attack of the user the more it's being used. I don't think it's being, it increases it every single turn, but there's a chance it might increase the special attack of the user in every single turn. So using it, especially on a Magnazone, especially a Magnazone that I've had in uh, the black and white games, I think it was the uh, the first one, uh, uh, white. Yeah, I was. Uh... And obviously, white wasn't the first of those games. It's just it was uh... that was the one I played of the uh, the first two. So uh... 
and using it on my magnet zone was a lot of fun. Anyways, um, let's catch you. Let's look at that. We went from talking about Aerodactyl to um, Charge Beam. It's a weird transition, but here we go. You can clearly see that the sun is no longer around. It's gone now. And it's really starting to get darker and darker with every single minute that passes. Every 60 seconds that passes, every 60 seconds in Africa, a minute passes. And if you know the meme, you know the meme, but uh, let's get back to uh, the, the Dialga mission for a second there. I think there's going to be one more thing left. Of course, more Pokeballs and Ultra Balls and some more Dialga themed experience. Catch seven Porygons. Okay. It's a digital Pokemon. Uh, one of the few man-made Pokemon. Not really sure why, what Dialga has to do with it, but I mean... In the Sinnoh region, they introduced a new evolution for Porygon with the dubious disc. And some people have made the connection that Porygon, that it was actually Team Plasma that came up with that evolution in order to get Cyrus out of um, uh, the distortion world. Which kind of doesn't really make sense because uh, you can't, I believe you can get the dubious disc before that you find it in the plasma hideout before cyrus goes in there i mean it, it says so in the in the pokedex that it was created in, a, in an attempt to travel between dimensions uh, to retrieve lost souls maybe it was because of cyrus i don't know it's a theory it's the theory but uh, there are a lot of holes in it just like in any theory Evolve a Pokemon because, you know, the theme of Sinnoh was all about evolutions and use 10 berries to help catch Pokemon. Okay, I can do that. Speaking of which, I should probably do that for the Metal Weta mission. But since I'm not really on a time schedule with that mission, get it? Time, because the Alga. Since I'm not really on a, on a deadline for that mission, and I think I've already done well enough, and I really kind of want, want this episode to be more focused on, you know, just enjoying the twilight time. Not the movies, obviously, but uh, enjoying the uh, this particular time of the day where you can still kind of see the last few remnants of sunlight from the sun. And enjoy how the wet, how uh, the game looks at this hour. So yeah, let's just clear these missions. Three thousand XP is nothing to scoff at. Now I definitely need some more XP. And uh, yeah, I'm still working on the Electabuzz stuff. I found out it can it can actually catch Electabuzz from uh, Team Go Rocket uh, Grunts, the Electric type specialist. Catching a Magma would be much more difficult, but we'll get to that, we'll cross that bridge when we'll, when we'll get to it. Okay, so Flareon, the third evolution introduced in Kanto, and presumably the precursor for Ante, because of the story I told yesterday. And, um... Let's... Clear this mission. We now have a... Super Rocket Raider, which means we can now fi find and battle Giovanni for a Shadow Ho-Oh, which I'm hoping to beat because you definitely need Rock types to battle Ho-Oh in any form. This is four times weak to Rock because of its Fire and Flying type, just like Charizard. So I'm hope it's a good thing that right now during this event a lot of Rhyhorns are uh, appearing in the wild. I need a lot of uh, Rhyhorn XL candies. To power up my ride period uh, because that's really going to be my main weapon against uh, shadow ho -Oh. but like i said we'll cross that bridge when we get to it incredible work with a super rocket raider in hand we'll have no problem fighting giovanni defeating him in, a, in battle however is another story entirely don't i know it uh still still seeing you were able to beat his underlings 
I'm certain I'll, you'll come out on, on top and save Ho O to boot. So yeah, I've been battling the Team Gold Rocket leaders for so long now that I've sort of kind of mapped out most of their Pokemon teams. Of course, they do change it every once in a while, but uh, they've sort of, they've really become easy, especially since I'm now level 41 in this game. But like he, like the man says, Giovanni's another story entirely. I'm gonna have to probably mega evolve some Pokemon in order to beat him. But I mean, you gotta find him first. Because he always has these decoys. You have to find him, battle him, and defeat him. Three things that are really not that easy. They're much easier said than done. He's not quite as spread out as some of his um, the Team Go Rocket leaders, I should say. But, uh, hold on. About 15 minutes. My pizza should be ready in... In, in no time at all I think so in the meantime why not pass the time by battling this Aerodactyl right here because I don't know I've spent a bunch of time talking about Aerodactyl in this episode and uh, what better way to finish an episode like this than battling the Aerodactyl that we spent all this time talking about okay um, Metagross is, is good. Steel uh, and it's my steel, my steel type moves using Metagross. Obviously, Metagross is a steel type. But uh, uh, hold on, we should invite some people over. Actually, I don't know if this guy will show up. Maybe this guy. No. What about? Yeah, this guy. Oops. Yeah, this person. Okay, so this Metagross only knows Steel types, namely Bullet Punch and Flash Cannon. Gyarados is a little tricky. It doesn't know. I mean, it knows a Water Charge attack, I think, but it uses Dragon Breath as its fast attack, and it's weak to Rock because of the Flying type. Vaporeon is good. I mean, it knows only knows Water Gun and Water Pulse. Water type moves good against uh, a rock and flying type like like Aerodactyl but uh, what it mostly comes through is with its ridiculously high HP uh, shiny dose knows waterfall which is really good also knows hydro pump Rayquaza knows dragon tail which you know the uh, uh, Aerodactyl could know some dragon type moves but it also knows ancient power which is great and Dragonite again with rock tail whoops rock tail Looks like this person decided to, to, to join, that's great. And I'm going to win the video. Um, yeah, he knows Dragon Tail, my Dragonite, and uh, Outrage. So it's probably going to be the least help, but I mean, it's the highest CP Pokemon I have, not named Slacking. So. But I mean, with two people, that Aerodactyl is toast. Let's be real here. So I think this is the first time I've ever battled a gym, I've ever battled in a raid. At this hour so yeah that's great now let's battle and of course this person has Kyogre ready to go I also have a Kyogre but I just didn't really uh, max out its uh, its CP should probably get around to doing that see legendary raids are tough to do in my area unless whoa this thing knows earth power Okay, so it's not going to be very effective on my Gyarados. The Earth Power, that is. There we go, Hydro Pump. Gotta charge up the Hydro Pump. Oh yeah, this thing is in the bag. Like, with two people, with two of us in here, the other person has a Kyogre. Oh yeah, this thing's going down. Oh, and then they also have a... Um, a Gyarados that knows uh, Dragon Breath. Yeah, as I, as I was saying, legendary raids are tough to do in my area. You either find someone to do it with, just join a group and just do a bunch of raids at once during raid hour. Other than that, you almost never find anyone to raid with. That's why I don't have a lot of legendaries. And out of the few legendaries I have, most of them really aren't 
uh, high in the CP department. But yeah, I mean, at least we be beat uh, the um, Aerodactyl. I think I might have been able to beat Aerodactyl alone, but it's great to do it with someone. Yep, uh, this uh, Captain Ch Cheney. Cheney, Cheney. Uh, this person got the final strike, and I was a style savant, because that's really the only award I can get, I guess. Okay, bonus challenge. It's not shiny. Uh, oops, I forgot you can't. I forgot you can only use the premier balls. But uh, yeah, if it was shiny, it would have been pinkish. Hope the other person got a shiny though. For helping me out here. I'm trying to go for an excellent throw, which is not easy on a moving target like Aerodactyl, but it is manageable, even without a, uh, any help from uh, my buddy. Let's try it again. Oh dang it. That's why I hate how come on that move during while you're and it's especially annoying with flying ties because at any given point they can just elevate up or uh, descend ascend or descend and it's really annoying. Okay, this is getting serious. I might not even be able to catch this aerodactyl. Not that I need it though, I mean I just got one from the mission, but still. It's not a Pokemon that you can find any day, and candy for this Pokemon is really hard to come by. Okay, cool. I got it. Awesome. Awesome amazing. Got some experience for uh for winning. And uh, I also got to. Uh, oh, and it, it, something I've noticed recently is at nighttime there's this song playing in the background with actual lyrics. Don't know why they added that that in, but I don't mind it. Okay, so for the Hoopa mission, which is where I need, I need to win five raids. This was the first. Okay, okay. But yeah, I mean. Uh, there's another one over there for Bronzor, I think. Yeah, Bronzor. Pretty sure I can take it on my, by myself. I have a ton of really powerful fire types and a bunch of really good dark types and some really, really strong ground types. And these are all three weaknesses. Well, I mean, it's not something that steel is weak to, but dark that is, but it's weak to fire and ground and also it's weak to dark because of the, the psychic type but in reality i don't really need it right now i can win the other four raids whenever i want to maybe even tomorrow when i'm trying when, when i'll try to uh, complete uh, the mellow mission so yeah right now i'm just enjoying uh, like I said, the twilight time of the day, and uh, I'm just gonna go over there and uh, pick up my pizza, so that I can go back home and watch some Schmodown stuff before going to work. All right. How much XP do I have right now? I'm well over 4 million. Okay. Cool. And uh, winning that raid certainly helped. Whenever you have a, a raid where it's much more winnable, it always helps because it you know, really helps with the XP. That's why I'm not doing a lot of legendary raids by myself, obviously. I only do legendary raids when I can see that someone's already in there. And not just one person, like a bunch of different people. I've been saying for a very long time now that they should just add like an a indicator or a counter that shows you how many people are currently in the lobby for a raid um, in the overworld without you having to go to, to this specific gym to look it up. It would save a lot of people a lot of trouble searching for raids to do together because raids are a communal thing. 
That's one of the best parts about this game is meeting different people. Now, obviously, COVID times really, really put a damper on that, but a lot of people started playing this game because of quarantine. It's ironic, but I mean, that's, that's the way it is. Anyway. Um, so yeah, the indicator uh, would be considered a good idea to help people join raids. Uh, how long have I been recording? 25 minutes, I think. Um, I think it's long enough for an episode on, of this magnitude. I did, I, did pl I did do plenty of stuff today, so I don't really think there's anything else I need to do right now. Plus, I'm really getting hungry, so uh, should probably go check on if whether or not the pizza's uh, ready yet. Oops, wrong button, sorry. Doesn't seem to be any other winnable raids in the area. Obviously, I'm not challenging a Mega Charizard by myself. I'm not challenging a Dialga by myself. Really, the only one I can challenge by myself is Bronzor, which is really not worth a remote raid pass, and I'm not going all the way over there for this thing, especially not... Sorry. <laughs> Considering that the raid is over in like three minutes, so as you can see, I, I now have a, a bit of a sneak attack of the hiccups, which is annoying, so uh, I'm gonna end this episode right here and now. So, uh, yeah, thank you for joining me for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, the twilight uh, time of the day as reflected on this game. And I uh, hope you enjoyed me seeing me and some other person beat um, an Aerodactyl in a raid. And if you are that other person watching right now, you're awesome. So, uh, thank you for that. And, uh, yeah. See you tomorrow, I suppose. Goodbye. Hello again, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video, because I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time, guys, I'll see you guys next time.